Hi there. In this video, I'm going to be looking at financial processes, uh, but focusing on the limitations of financial reports and the ethical issues related to financial reports. Um, so firstly, there are, reports have got limitations. Okay, There's only so much you can uh, put on a report and only so much that can be seen on it. So some of the limitations really, you need, you need to exercise caution when reading any financial information. Okay. Um, misleading information impacts on business decision making and puts the business at risk. Um, so caution needs to be exercised when reading any financial information. So the first limitation is uh, what we call normalized earnings. This is the process of removing um, a one-time or an unusual influence from the balance sheet to really show the true earnings of a company. So an example of this would be uh, the removal of a land sale which would achieve a large capital gain. So they may have sold land once, received quite a large amount of money for it, uh, but they've only sold one piece of land and that may have happened uh, for the first time in 10 years and probably will never happen again for another 10 or 20 years. So by removing it, um, it shows the true value, uh, the true earnings of a company. It doesn't sort of um, give the illusion that they're making more than they normally do because it was a one-off unusual sale. Uh, another limitation is what we call capitalizing expenses. Um, so this is the process of adding uh, a capital expense to the balance sheet uh, that is regarded as an asset rather than an expense. So examples of capitalizing expenses would be, for example, uh, research and development, um, any expenditure to, you know, maybe a shop fit out. Um, that should really be an expense because they've spent money. However, they flip it over and say it's actually an asset because that shop fit out will now help us um, uh, produce more, you know, sandwiches, and that'll then bring us more money. So it's technically an asset. Um, and that again, that's a bit of a limitation there because you don't know which way they should be going. Um, valuing assets is another limitation. So this is the process of estimating the market value of assets or liabilities. Um, so the, there are two main methods here for valuing assets. So the discounted cash flow method. Um, this method estimates the value of an asset based on its expected future cash flows, um, which are then discounted to the present. So what's, what's its present value? Um, or the guideline company method. Uh, this method determines the value of a firm um, by observing the prices of similar companies, okay, called guideline companies, um, that, that are sold in the market. So... Um, Basically looking at, well, what's everyone else doing? We'll sort of, you know, use that as our, as our, um, as our, um, as our starting point to work things out. Uh, there are also timing issues. So financial reports usually cover activities over a period of time, which is roughly a year, a financial year. Okay. Um, therefore, the business financial position may not really be a true representation if the business has experienced seasonal fluctuations. So um, over Christmas, over Mother's Day, over Valentine's Day, over Easter, whatever it may be, um, depending on when they um, bank the most of their money, if they've experienced seasonal fluctuations, you may actually get um, a bit of, a, a, bit of a, um, um, a unique financial position. That's not really a true representation because it sort of, um, you know, it fluctuates too much. Um, debt repayments are a limitation as well. So um, financial reports can be limited because they don't really have the ability to disclose um, a lot of specific information about debt repayments. So for example, um, how long has the business actually had that debt or how long have they been trying to recover the debt? Um, you know, the capacity of the business to actually uh, repay the amount it's owed or, you know, what if they close to bankruptcy and they can't pay the debt? That's not going to be on a report. You're not going to see that. Um, you know, the adequacy of, um, of, of provisions and methods the business has for the recovery of debt. Um, what, if, um, what if they can't recover the debt? What, uh, what uh, strategies do they have in place? Um, that's not going to be on any financial report. So again, um, yes, they, they, they may be paying debts or rec recovering debts, but it doesn't really have information about how long they've been doing it for or how well they're doing it. Um, and finally, there's also notes for a financial statement. So these, these are the details and any additional information that is left out normally of the main reporting documents. Um, they include you know, important things such as the accounting methodologies used for recording and reporting transactions. 
um, that can really affect the bottom line um, for the company. Okay, but again, you don't normally see these on a balance sheet. You don't normally see them on an income statement. Um, but they're 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 put in still, but they might be somewhere else. So you need to to um, look at where they may be in order to get a better picture of the financial statement. Um, and finally, the ethical issues related to financial reports. So, um, really, firstly, the, the the first ethical issue is the audited accounts. Um, now, an audit is is an independent check of how accurate the financial records and accounting procedures are. Okay, um, it has a really important role. So, it ensures that um, it ensures that there isn't anything you know, to, for lack of a better term, anything dodgy happening. Okay, um, it also um, it also looks at, okay, well, if there are any issues, what changes need to be made to avoid any issues uh, in the future later on? Uh, record keeping is also an ethical issue um, because it really comes down to how accurately, how honestly are they recording the data in their financial reports in the first place? Um, so, the, you know, there's a temptation sometimes to receive payment in the, firm, in, in the, in the uh, form of cash and then not record the transaction, okay? Um, so it doesn't show up as business revenue. So you don't pay taxes. However, it reduces your profit for the year. So it then doesn't look as attractive for potential investors. So there's a bit of a, a bit of a um, bit of a, an issue there as well. Uh, the ethical issue of the GST obligations, the goods and services tax. Um, so you know it makes it um, it makes it harder for people to operate in in cash in the cash economy to avoid taxes, like we spoke about. Um, so while while it's the consumer at the end of the production stage who bears the cost of the GST, it's collected at every step of the way up until the consumer by the uh, by the by the, um, the company that makes it. So businesses have a have a legal and ethical obligation to make sure that they're reporting and collecting the GST. Um, and finally, reporting practices. So not only are um, uh, accurate financial reports necessary for taxes. But other stakeholders uh, are entitled to access information about the business's current financial standing. So understating a profit or overstating the value of assets may actually be, um, be counterproductive because when um, a potential buyer looks at the uh, reports a bit more closely, it might then actually backfire for the business. So I hope that this uh, video on the limitations of financial reports and the ethical issues related to financial reports uh, has been useful. The next uh, video will start looking at financial strategies and the very first one will be cash flow management. Thank you.